All right. Lomas, thank you so doing? much. So good to have Very you good. on, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. abs- absolutely. All right. This is a there lot of fun go. for us. Hi, Herman. How you yeah. doing? Hey, good. Good to see you. Hey, guys. there we go. All right. All right. We're dealing. So here's the secret plan. We got Co- Coach Fonts. We're going to pull him on the phone here really quick. It's been 30 years almost. We're at a 30-year anniversary of the Lions' last playoff win, and you guys were all just instrumental in it. Uh, Coach usually comes on about once a year with us. We just kind of thought we'd surprise him with some of his guys and thought it might be fun to reminisce a little bit about the old days. You guys you guys feel good about that? Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Good, good. Absolutely. I'm just check my audio levels, make sure everything's good on my end. Good? Yeah. yeah. You sound yeah. great. You sound good. You sound great. You always look you sound good. good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like you in a cave, but you all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. How you going to have a nice mic up there, man? And what are you doing over there? <laughs> Nothing, man. I'm just chilling, man. All right. Yeah. All right. Here go. Here goes Coach Fonz. You should prank call him, right? Let's <laughs> hope he picks up. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Coach. How you doing? It's Chris from the Detroit Lions podcast. Hey, Chris. How you doing, buddy? Oh, doing great. I'm here with Jeff. I've got a couple other guys with me. I know we talked about having you on the show here, doing our St. Jude kind of money raising thing. I think you know these guys. You may or you may remember them. Uh, a guy named Herman Moore and a guy named Lomas Brown are both with uh, with us to kind of <laughs> reminisce about some of the magic that happened 30 years ago. Who did you say? <laughs> Lomas Brown and Herman Moore. <laughs> Never heard of. <laughs> what's up, Coach? Hey, Coach. What's going on, Coach? My coattails, but I have no idea who these guys are hey, at all. Right. Listen, Lomas, Herman, how you guys doing? Hey, Coach, you know what? We're well and uh, uh, miss talking to you just when we were asked to be able to have the opportunity to come on and speak with you, man. It was an uh, absolute pleasure. You know, we love you. So it's uh, it's great to hear your voice. You know, yeah. I love you guys. It ain't too. been the same around here, Coach, without you. You already know that. You see it for yourself. But, hey, everybody keep talking about those 90s teams, those teams back in the 90s. That's all they can talk about right now because things haven't been, you know, haven't been going well around here. So you still have an everlasting impression left on the city and the state of Michigan around here. I appreciate that, guys. You know, I just – the last thing I remember, they ran me out of town on a rail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you know, guys, I, I think of those those teams also. Uh, uh, I was Lomas Herman. I was uh, I was blessed. I, I really I really feel that uh, uh, those nineties were about you guys. Uh, I always remember coming to the locker room, and I always told you guys after a game I, how much I appreciated the effort that you guys put put forth in, in trying to get to a Super Bowl. And we guys, we were very close. Uh, who yeah. knows uh, uh, a year or two more, uh, get a d- different guy. You know what? The big thing about pro football is you need the guy under the center that can take you all the way. And um, yeah. uh, we had, we had, we had good quarterbacks. We had good running backs. Oh, excuse me. We had a great running back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can I tell a little story? You know, I'm rattling because I, I'm, I'm so I get a couple of stories about well, I would love you, Coach. Uh, Herman and, and uh, Lomas. I remember we were playing in, um, I think it was Minnesota, and uh, it was like about one minute, 45 seconds to go, and, and we had run a play, and, it, and the play uh, it didn't get anything. So now it was fourth, fourth at about a half a foot uh, on our own, like, 35-yard line or so, and we're only up by two. And uh, I remember I said, uh, Frank Gann says, punting team. So the punting team runs on the field to punt the ball. Now I'm sitting there saying that we got a, they got a minute 45. They get two passes. They kick a field goal. They can win the game. So I remember, I remember, Lois, you probably don't remember this. I remember you coming off the, off the field and you said, Coach, we can make this. And I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I said, time, time out. <laughs> I said, now I got my big fella going to tell me what to do here. <laughs> so I said, time out. So I get, in the, I get in my phone. I go, what do you guys think up there? And the phones went silent. No one, <laughs> no one wanted to say anything. So I walked down the other end, and I came back. And I remember Benny Blaze. I think it was Benny. Can't remember. It's been so long ago. 
Then he said, we don't make it, we'll stop them. And Loma said, to God is my witness, he said, Coach, we're going to make this. So I said, all right, let's go for it. Now, no coach in the history of the world would have went for it. If we didn't make it, I'd have been fired on the spot. <laughs> I'd have had to come back home on a bicycle instead of the plane. But anyway, <laughs> the whole world got the whole world knows we're going to run over Lomas and Barry's going to carry the ball. Everybody knows that. But we're going to run it anyway. So we run the play, and Barry goes straight up the middle, and he gets hit, and he bounces backwards about four feet in the air. I said, oh, my God, we're going to lose yardage. We're going to lose this game. And Barry lands on his feet. He lands on his feet and immediately runs left. Now the whole team is running after Barry left. He stops and goes right, and there's another whole team on the right side. So he stops, and he runs straight ahead, and he leaps. And they hit him. He looked like one of those spiral things flying in the air. He lands and goes down. The officials come up, spot the ball, and they come out, and they measure it, and he made it by a toenail. <laughs> and uh, I looked up, and I said, that was the only call to make. And I said, thanks, Lomas. So, Lomas, <laughs> if we didn't make that, you'd have been fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey Lomas, Coach, you know what? You're making me nervous, man, that you didn't even take the advice of Lomas Brown at a curve. Oh, like, hey, hey, come on, Hearn. That was good. You know, you know, it's, I it's, nah, I'm, just, I'm just kidding you, man. I, you, know, you know, we had a lot yes, of you know, it's, it's, it's never, it's never, It's never wrong to take and listen to players, especially – the great players, especially players that that busted their behinds in practice, especially guys that cared about cared about winning for Detroit. I mean, these guys, uh, Chris, these guys gave everything they had. And, I, and for people sometimes to say, well, this team wasn't that good. This, this team was good. Lomas Brown, Herman, well, that team was good. That team, we were one doggone one, one second away maybe from a Super Bowl. And uh, for, the, for that, to, to mis- dismantle that team, uh, let those players go to other places, et cetera. It, it, it hurt very much. In, uh, but uh, I, I never forget uh, the locker rooms uh, after the games. And I, yeah. I, I remember, am I rattling here, Chris? No, no. And I'm just sitting here thinking to myself, <laughs> Coach, one of the great tragedies in Lions history was was how the you were treated by the media and the staff in, in, in Detroit. You deserve so much more because you brought so much. And, you know, people talk about the Bobby Lane curse, and I know you didn't curse Detroit because you're not that kind of guy, Coach. But what's happened since you go- you've been gone is you could almost say they, in a way, deserve it for the way you- they treated you because you were far better than you were ever treated. Well, I, I appreciate it, but you have to know there's Chris, and I-, I have no idea if there's hundreds of people listening to the show or maybe five, but whatever it is. I want you to know I was treated super in that locker room. Yeah. That was the most important thing for me was was how Lomas and how uh, Herman and how Barry and how uh, uh, Chris Spillman and how all those guys treated treated Wayne Fonts. And I think the big thing was when I took over the job, I, I knew for me to get close to winning, I had to have – great people around me i remember uh, i remember we used to have meetings in my my office downstairs right lomas herman oh yeah yeah, yeah they, listen, listen chris they used to come in the we we were practicing two days and it was hot and we're out there all of a sudden herman and and uh and lomas and kevin glover and the guys would come in my office and they'd say coach i said what's up what's up big fella that was what I called. That's what I called Lomas. I mean, remember that Lomas? I said, "Listen, big fellow." I said, "What's up?" He says, "Coach, you the, the fellas." He said, "The fellas uh, want to talk to." You. I said, "What about what?" He said, "You know, we've been practicing twice a day. We haven't had a day off." He said, "Our legs, our legs are very heavy." He said, "He said we're getting tired." So I said, "Wait a minute." I said, uh, call Barry Sanders in the office. So Barry came in, <laughs> and I said, Barry, how are your legs? He said, they're fine. I said, okay, let's go to practice. <laughs> yeah. I remember. <laughs> and I remember. 
that was definitely the man. barometer. <laughs> hey, Lo, that was the barometer. I always remember, man. We used to always want to know how Barry was doing because that we knew that was really our ticket coach. We knew you, know? you were you were you were gauging us by Barry. So that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. And her, I got a story about Herman Moore. Uh Uh-oh. we're playing we're playing Dallas. <laughs> and and this is true stuff now. I mean, probably fans don't quite understand it, but but players and coaches have great relationships, and, and I had a great one with my team. And and I remember we were playing Dallas, and we're on, but we're on about, about three yard line, and uh, the game is close. I can't remember the score, but, but I remember the situation. Uh, it's third down, and uh, like I said, two or three yards to go. So we go, we go back there. We call a pass play to Herman. We just call it just a just a fade to Herman in the, in the corner of the end zone, and the ball goes sailing over his head. And now it's fourth down, and I said, well, we're two points up. Let's kick this field goal and just win by one if we could stop them. We came off the field, and I don't remember Herman. I'm not making this stuff up, Chris. Herman came off the field, and he came right up to me, and he says, Coach. I said, what's up, Herman? He says, Coach, I could catch this thing. He said, just tell, I think it was Eric Kramer, so just tell Eric to put a little air under the ball. Yep. Uh, I said, put a little air. He said, so I knew what he meant. He just wanted the ball float, not a stream line. He wanted the ball in the air like a basketball player. Mm-hmm. So again, I called time out, Chris. I said, oh my God, <laughs> I want to listen to Herman Moore now. <laughs> so Did you ever coach? I said, Herman, I said, Herman, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he said, just put some air under the ball. So I said, I called the quarterback over, I called time out. I said, we're going for it. So we go the we go out in the field, Barry gets or whatever, and he just lofts the ball. And, and, and Herman goes up and, of course, catches it, and he slammed it down. He came off the field. He said, I told you I could do it. He said, I could eat penis off that guy's head. <laughs> <laughs> I was a trash talker. <laughs> I really was. <laughs> you know, and, and we, can I just rattle here? We used to. Yeah. We used to <laughs> all day, all day. I could listen all day. You got your floor, coach. <laughs> listen, we used to we used to practice, you know, something that no team in history practice. We used to practice standing up for the national anthem on the sideline. My guys look good on the sideline for the national anthem. So anyway, we would do that. At practice started at one. We would get on that line at one o'clock in the home and blow them. They'd all be on the line. So it's twelve fifty nine, and and. Uh, one guy's always missing. It was Herman, of course. <laughs> and I said, I said, Lomas, where's Herman? How does he know to come out of one? And Lomas said, he hides in the corner, coach. He watches the clock. <laughs> when he sees it close to one, he sprints out on the field. That's me. Oh, hey, that, hey, coach, yeah. they started calling me the fog, man. So that, yeah, that's that's you know what? Nice. I just mysteriously just come 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 rolling in out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he just hit me and I couldn't believe it. I kept saying, how did he figure it out? And Loma said, Clock, the clock's right there. I said, Oh God, there it is. <laughs> so so coach Herman told a story about training camp sneaking in a little bit late after curfew and, and you guys cross paths and it was one of those. I didn't see you, and you didn't see me moments. Well, absolutely. I still didn't see him. <laughs> well, I, I want to ask Lomas if he's got any stories about his time with Coach that kind of stick out um, in a similar vein. Oh, or... yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, look, we used to always love to go to Tampa. You know, Tampa, of course, you know, that's Coach Stomping Grounds. And, you know, it was beautiful. <laughs> You know, the weather's always beautiful. They got the grass, nice grass field. So you're getting off the Silver Dome turf, you know, and we would always, for some reason, <clears throat> Coach, we would always get an extra day or two down in Tampa. I don't know why. Either we leave a day early or coming back a day later. But we would always somehow end up getting a, a day back. And, man, guys, for, b- verbatim, they were telling this story. Coach was all, hey, coach, get up in front of the team. He'd be like, man, this is a business trip. We're going down <laughs> here straight for business and stuff. And, man, we get down to Tampa. And it, it was a couple of establishments that everybody used to partake in. We'll leave it at that. We'll just call them establishments that we couldn't wait to get off the plane to get to when we got down to Tampa. So, coach, I appreciate We always appreciate it. The Tampa Bay mini camps and the Tampa Bay trips down there, they were always fun. 
They were, <laughs> nothing, nothing but work. Hard work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we always had excellent participation too, which was great. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 I, hey, hey, Coach, I got a story I wanted to share with you. I don't know if you recall. If I if I could share something real quick. Uh, so, Coach, I don't know if you remember when I was at the University of Virginia. I had, I had first time I had met you. They said Coach Wayne Fonts is coming to visit you. And this is before you guys were going to pick me as a first round. I remember it like it was yesterday, Herman. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, I remember you came and and they had me put on my gloves, get my shorts, get my my cleats, get my. We were going to go over to Scott Stadium. I got ready for the turf. I was stretching. I was running a couple, you know, laps and stuff like that to just get really loose. And then all of a sudden, you came in. We were inside of Scott Stadium. And uh, you had a football in your hand. I'm like, okay. You're yes, start I did. Home. I remembered, Herman. I, I remember. And I said, you know, you're going to work me out, throw me some routes. I'm looking for a quarterback or someone that's going to be throwing me all these, these passes. And so we just started walking around Scott Stadium. And then you just said, uh, you tell me a little bit about the Lions. You tell me a little bit about the history. You tell me about a guy by the name of Barry Sanders and all these great things that were going to happen in Detroit. And you say, you know what? If you're there, very definitively, if you're there with the 10th pick, we're going to select you. And, and I was like, wow, this is, this is like surreal. And then I'm walking, thinking ready to do something. You said, that's basically it. And then we left. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and I, I was thinking that we was going to work out and do all this stuff. And I'm like, all ready and all nervous. I was like, wow. <laughs> so wait, not only did he not coach, but the players drafted themselves. Is that what I mean? <laughs> Listen, I, I saw this guy. I said, this guy is 6'5". I heard he guy jump 6'5". I said, why am I even here? I said, if you're there, we're going to take you. <laughs> I flew all the way to the university and well, I talked to him in five minutes and left. I said, you are a guy. Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, my goodness, man. Oh, we man. had so much fun. It, it had, was just stories like you that. Know what? It was just so much. Man, Coach, you know, and I ended up playing for, you know, four other teams and, you know, other different coaches. I could say it was it wasn't another coach I played for that was like you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, you just kept it loose, you know, for us and everything. It was just fun to come to work. That's why I remember the locker room. That's why I say Detroit is my best locker room because, you know, it was just fun to come to work. And that's half of the battle, especially if you ain't winning as much as you should be on the field. You know, just coming to work and being with the fellas, man. So it, that 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 was fun. That's what I remember the most about my days in Detroit. Uh, you know what, Lomas and, and uh, Herman, uh, I remember. You know what, I remember games, but I remember you guys. And, and this is no BS or nothing. And and uh, even today, I'll I'll sit and talk to people when I'm I'm retired here and. Uh, I don't want to say where I'm going to be I'm, I'm trying to hide, guys. You understand what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I don't want anybody to find me. <laughs> Yet here I am, right, Coach? <laughs> but I don't know how Chris found me. <laughs> Just right off the road, my friend. <laughs> but, but you, know, you, know, you know what, Chris? Uh, when I got the job, uh, I remember calling. You know, I, I did something maybe. I don't know if it was unique or not. I always talked to my players alone. Uh, I would walk in and uh, and I would say, for example, I would say the meeting, I'm going to have a meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. So sometime, I would walk in at maybe 8.58 and I'd walk in the room. The guys would still be sitting out there and i say, let's go. They said, no, coach, you said it was 9 o'clock. I said, when I walk through the door, regardless if it's 6.30, 8.30, it's 9 o'clock. When you see me go through this door, it's meeting time. So I used to walk through, they would fly to the office into the room for the meetings. They were polite. You know, and, and Chris, I, I hope this doesn't uh, bother anybody, make anybody feel that it's not in foot. They were respectful. These guys, they were men, and they were respectful. And I told them this. I said, guys, <clears throat> excuse me. I said, guys, you will never, ever read in the paper that Herman Moore or, or Lomas Brown or whoever Miss the block or miss the pass. This is in this locker room only. I will never ever criticize any of you guys in public. I said, but when those doors close and we're in together, I really got after their hind end, and they'll tell you that I respected them. But the biggest thing, Chris, they respected me. 
and and then, then we had a great love affair and and uh, uh my life is like i said i'm right now i'm i'm in the fourth quarter of my life well maybe i might be in overtime i'm getting so old but <laughs> but anyway i have great memories and no one no one will ever take those away from me and and uh, i remember i could tell you so we used to go in the locker room and the, and the vet the veterans would would all be well they'd come into practice two three days after the after the rookies and I, I would walk in the room <clears throat> and the veterans would come in and I, I told the rookies that nobody every position every position is open nobody has this team made and i, I can't remember who it was it might have been brett perriman where he <laughs> said wait a minute he said wait a minute he said see that little guy sitting over there number 20 he hasn't made it <laughs> so don't anybody knock him down in practice <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember that? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, we had we oh, yeah. and that was the time, Chris, that in practice Barry ran us. Barry got in the huddle, and uh, whenever Barry got in the huddle, I said, told the defense, "Don't anybody touch him. <laughs> Don't anybody tap him. Don't even knock him on the ground." And so he would get in the huddle, and uh, Jerry Ball would say, "Oh, guys, he said Barry's in the huddle." He said, we're going to knock him sideways. I said, <laughs> I said don't, almost, don't let anybody knock Barry down. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and we, we would give the ball to Barry and not a person would touch him. Uh, he should have been wearing a red jersey back in the day. Nobody could yeah, touch could Barry. <laughs> but you know what? I, again, I can't, I can't, I can't tell you how much I, 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 I loved my job and, I, can't, I remember the first day I walked in the office and I was interim head coach and I walked in the office guys. And, and I can't remember who the receptionist was. And I walked in, she said, oh, good morning. And I walked down the hall and I stopped and I can't went back. And I said, uh, Susan, whatever name I can't remember. He said, listen, I said, listen, when I walk through this door, when you say good morning, say it with a smile, we're going to change the face of the Detroit Lions. We're going to be a happy organization. And and, uh, and and from then on, I mean, it was just not because I was going to be head coach. It was because I wanted everybody in that building to love to be a Detroit Lion. And and you got two of the best right there, Chris. And uh, uh, I, I you could take Herman Moore and, and, and uh, uh, Lomas Brown to the bank. And uh, you might get a dollar ninety five, but it'll be a good dollar ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> <Coach, laughs> <never changed. laughs> and coach, I, I want to just say this, man, and and I, I'm glad to have the opportunity, and and I want to thank uh, Chris for for reaching out and putting us together so that we can have this conversation because so much time passes. But as anyone who's who's looking at this can see. When you establish those type of relationships, they're they're longstanding, and a, it, it could be years, but it doesn't seem like it's even been a second. And the respect never wavers; it never goes away. Um, you gave us foundation as as men of how we should carry ourselves as professional athletes. Also, you showed us how and what it meant to have accountability, uh, to show good sportsmanship, but also to get it done together. And I think you brought us to a place where I don't think many of us thought we'd ever be able to get to. And while we didn't win a Super Bowl, uh, we won in every other facet of, of that game uh, as people. And it was because we had leadership like you that was there. And as you said before, the fact that you would sit there and take all the blame for us meant that we were going to give you every single thing that we had because that was out of the respect not only that you asked for, but but that you deserve. So um, on behalf of myself and I know my teammates, I just want to say we thank you, we love you, and, uh, man, I really, really appreciate this uh, this opportunity. Uh, yeah, Romani, you know what? <laughs> I'm taken by that, and I, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, you said something. That, you know what? Uh, a lot of players, I would talk to a lot of players, and they would never have a relationship with the head coach as – uh, I had with you and you guys had with me and you said something at the end of your statement there that you love me. I love you guys. And and, and I always did uh, through thick and thin. I know you guys are all, all behind me. And, and uh, we all, uh, Chris, we were on a, a, a straight line. We were all, we were all in the same line. We were all men and we were told the line, but 
I always told him this. If anything goes wrong and I say, hey, you better jump off the line because I am the head coach. But I'll tell you this. You'll never have more respect that I gave those guys. And they gave it back to me, Chris. And I, I can't uh, – people in Detroit, uh, they don't understand that the relationships you have with, with players. I, I know some coaches never had it, but I had it from the last player to the first player. And uh, uh, I, I can't tell you, my family and I – in fact, I'm sitting in my – I call it my man cave – and I'm looking at I'm looking at two guys that look very young here, and uh, I'm looking at Herman Moore and and uh, my, my fellas, my fellas Lomas, and uh, I got your pictures on the wall, guys. And uh, yeah. I'll never, I'll listen, I'll never, ever forget you. And I, I hope that you guys and and everybody around that's here, I hope you guys are rooting for the Lions. Uh, I root I root for my team all the time. Every Sunday, uh, if I can't get it on my TV, I go to a sports bar, and I walk in, and they set up, put the picture right there, the Detroit Lions game right there, and they bring me some chicken wings. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm ready for the game. <laughs> that's 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 fabulous, Coach. I know we've kept you longer than than we were supposed to. I I could listen Certainly. to you guys talk all day. It's it's absolutely amazing. But I want to just before we we kind of wrap on behalf of Lions fans in the city of Detroit, Herman Lomas and and Coach Fonts, um, we you know you don't know what you got till it's gone, and you guys did a lot for the city. You did a lot for the team. You brought a lot of joy to Lions fans. So on on behalf of everyone out there who's been a Lions fan and watched you guys play and wish they could see you guys play, and Coach, well, have you players coach for you but thank you <laughs> thank you so much for all you did for the team and the city and and you know it's, it's it's a shame that it's been 30 years since the lions have won a playoff game but you guys did it and that's something very very special and, and it it's something everybody still points to as kind of the the most modern and recent pinnacle of success for this team so i think you guys can hang your hat on 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 the greatness that you carried on the field and off so thank you all chris i appreciate it but i'll tell you this it wasn't about me. It was about the guys that are sitting with you. It was all about those guys. And, and they never fell short. They never fell short of, of uh, respect for one another. And they never fell short for winning the Super Bowl. They gave everything they had. And, and maybe I came up a little short. But they, they gave me 100% every time they took the field. And, and uh, that's something that I appreciated and I loved about those guys. And, and I, I hope this is – people don't think I'm uh, a little weird here, but Herman Moore and uh, Lomas Brown, I love you guys, and I still do. Love you too, Coach. Yeah, yeah love you it. too, Coach. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Herman. Yeah. Thank you, Lomas. Thank you all for joining us. This was this was absolutely fabulous. And I, I, I encourage you all to write each other a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Chris. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Jeff. Don't let Chris. everybody know where you Appreciate found it. it. Pardon me? Don't let anybody know where you found me. No, no, we, you, yeah. we're hidden. We, 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 we're still going to meet up here oh, this week, so I, I can't say anything. I can't blow this. But you, he's about to go back and hide, and now Coach about to go back and hide, and now that's what he's about to do. It just cost me some chicken wings, just to tell you, just so hey, you know. Hey, hey Big Bill, I'm going to hide. I'll see you guys. All, All right, right, Coach. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll see see you. I love you. Take care, oh, Coach. You know me. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Wayne Fonts, awesome. Thanks so much, Coach. Herman Lomas, um, Herman, I know you've been on before. Guys. Lomas, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you guys coming, man. Absolutely. It was it was really great to do yeah. that for Coach, and it's it's so great to see you guys' relationship. As, as you said, Herman, something that's kind of tied and lasted so many years together. That's really special. Yeah. It is, and uh, I can't say it enough. Thank you both, uh, you and Jeff, for, for, for having us on, and uh, keep up the great work. I know you do a lot of philanthropic work. Uh, I know that uh, having the opportunity to do uh, do so much for others, man, means a lot. So my absolute pleasure uh, being here on behalf, like I said, myself, uh, I know my teammate Lomas and, and all of us that are supportive of what everyone in our community does. So I want to say thank you to that and hope uh, you reach your, your fundraising goals. And uh, as always, anything we can do to help, we're here. Lions Nation Unite, Herman Moore. 
Yes, Lomas yeah. Brown. Yeah, thanks, to, thanks to the shirt, Herman. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Lions yeah. fans everywhere. Marking oh. our camel. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> we talk about it all the time, uh, Lomas. We tell people turn off the volume on the TV and turn up the radio. Get Lomas and Dan oh, and yeah, uh, yeah. get the right kind yeah. of game calls because you'll find excellent announcers there comparatively every yeah, game. So. Yeah, hopefully we have something good coming up after this bye week to talk about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're hungry. We're all hungry it, for it. It can't get much worse than it was was last week I tell me about it you're right you're right <laughs> all right hey one question for you guys um I think about when coach took over and 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 I didn't want to put him through it but this this question came up in the chat what do you think about the Lions this year compared to when coach took over I mean do you see a lot of similarities in in where the team is and the coach that they brought in or are these two different planes of existence completely well, I just know for me, I just think we had more veterans, you know, in the locker room. They they they're gonna have to get some more veteran voices in their locker room. So you know, when things start going bad like they are now, you know, you want to make sure you keep guys up and kind of keep guys on the even keel, and that's what the you know strong veterans in your locker room could do. So that I think that might be the biggest difference. I like the philosophy. I like the coaching staff that Coach Campbell has. I like everything he's doing. I just think right now they're so young in that locker room. Guys are probably looking at each other and nobody has an answer for them right now, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, that's a great yeah. point. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just add something real quick to that. You know, when you, you talk about that, and even Coach, you talk about the difference between the two teams or those different regimes, is that there was a leadership presence that was expected uh, that in the absence of a coach being around, you got to have those that will pick up the slack and be able to carry the torch. And for for us, it came no, it came even as deep as each unit had a leader within it. Yeah. And so they they're just absent that all the way around. And it's unfortunate because when it turns where it is now, is just it's it's hard to get out of it by just being coached out of it. Sometimes you got to play your way out of it. Yeah. 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 Great insights, guys. Again, thank you for the time. Sorry we ran over, but I, I could I, if I could hold on to you guys all day, I would. You're you're, you're both amazing. So thank you so much. No, we appreciate right. it, guys. You guys Chris, Jeff, thank you. Yeah, have a good weekend. All right, you Thanks. too. Thanks.